Welcome back to the ninth episode of the Head and Heart podcast, the self-appointed cutest football podcast out there. Um, it's going to be a huge magic round, so let's get straight into it. Um, let's talk accountability. Right, Head? How'd you go this week? Yeah, What's so for myself, I went uh, I went three of five on the bets posted on the podcast with a total profit of $196.50, and my total profit for the week was $282.81 due to uh, some other bets. Uh, finally back in the winner's column this week. What about yourself? Yeah, so I'm up a very healthy $20. I had one of eight and I had a very head bet, but we'll get into that. I basically thought I'm thinking too much of my heart here. I need to fix myself up. And that bet did get up, but we'll talk about that a bit later with the results. Um, so the first game of last week was the Dolphins defeating the Sea Eagles 30 to 24. Bit of a shock one, that one. Yeah, um, yeah, I definitely didn't expect it to be to be that scoreline. I didn't bet on the game though. Uh, I expected, uh, yeah, it could have been anything from Manly in that game, and the Dolphins have been showing up. So I probably still thought Manly would win, but yeah, the, the Dolphins uh, looked really good in this one. What did you have? Yeah, so I had Manly thirteen plus with Turbo and Garrick anytime try scorer, neither of which went over. And I should say Turbo did go over, yeah, but unfortunately he died at the end. Um, yeah, so this is no longer my best bet ever. I'm never touching this again. It's now poo. I'll move on. Uh, next game of the week, though, was Panthers, who won by only six points to the Bulldogs 16-10. Did you see that coming at all? Yeah, I mean, I did say, but I give the Bulldogs uh, their credit in this one. Uh, you do have to take into account, uh, into account this game that clearly went down, so... Uh, that scoreline may not have been reflective of what it could have ended up being. But yeah, the Bulldogs have been strong this year and um, from credit to them. So Yeah, definitely. They are showing up. They're a better team than last year. Um, rather frustratingly, though, they are sticking it to the big guys. So it means I can't have my bets get up with Panthers 13 plus and Taruva any time. But you just love to see a strong doggies for this reason. If the Panthers are going to play like poo, please do. Yeah, Dogs of War are back. Uh, that'll get into one of my bets uh, for this week. Uh, the next game, though, was the Eels-Broncos. Uh, what did you have in that game? So I had Broncos 13+, plus and Sevo any time. Um, Sevo, it's the first game I've ever seen where Sevo doesn't look like he was going to score the most undeserved try of all time. Um, rather disappointing, but I, I'm glad I knew that they, they won by 13. Yeah, so... For myself, I had, on the podcast, I mentioned Eels plus nine and a half, but I thought it would go out and it did end up going out up to ten and a half. So I jumped on the ten and a half. Uh, that was looking pretty good in points. Uh, yeah, Eels had many chances to sort of make it a lot closer than it was and they didn't end up putting those chances away. So unfortunately, that, that, that lost by one try. Uh, it's a frustrating game to watch this one. But yeah, the Broncos, oh, the Broncos look good still, so... Um, probably a team that I would be scared of playing against at this point in time. Uh, moving on to the next game was the Tigers versus the Knights. The Knights got another win. That's three straight for the boys. Three in a row, baby. Don't need that, Kalen. We just good team on our own. Yeah, yeah. Armstrong's been absolutely killing it. And we sort of mentioned in the last podcast for anyone that was sort of uh, a bit off, a uh, bit off Armstrong after his performance uh, the week before that you can't really read too much into the games that are in the rain uh, and and sort of as we predicted Armstrong came out and had a good game uh, this week. It's funny, it was also torrential rain for like about 30 minutes of that game but yeah yeah, yeah no, it was, it was pretty good I, I thought the Knights would, would win a bit more comfortably but the Tigers came back in the end and I'm kind of surprised uh, and then also Dan Gagai was kicking for us and Dan Gagai has one of the worst boots I've ever seen. I think that's a real problem that needs to be fixed right away but I, in this game, I had the Knights win by 13. It very well could have if they held on at the end. And I also had Kai Pierce Hall and uh, I think it was yeah Armstrong to go over. This was placed on before Kai Pierce Paul ended up getting shipped to the bench. So I'm calling this one a moral victory. Yep. Safe moral victory, basically. Kai Pierce Paul starts. The Knights probably win by more in, in these scores. Oh, that's it. They would have scored. He would have definitely scored. Like you could tell. He was cracking down that defensive line. If he had 10 more minutes, he would have personally run over. He would have run over Buller himself. 
yeah, given, given. And we can talk more of what, what to do with Kai Piss Paul now that he's uh, not starting, it looks like. Um, but yeah, that, we'll get into that in a bit later. Uh, the next game was the Dragons Rabbitohs game. For myself, I luckily jumped on the Dragons early at a minus two, even if you jumped on the Dragons at their final line, which got out to three and a half, four and a half. Uh, that, that still would have won quite comfortably. So the Dragons definitely the best way to play this one. And I'm happy that I got on them. Uh, what about yourself? Yeah, so I had Dragons at a line of 19 and a half. Lomax 10 plus points. Lomax to score a try. And then also Rava Lava to score at 850. Um, so that obviously they won by 14 points. Latrell Mitchell scored a late double. Yeah, we'll talk about that later as well. But um, it's rather frustrating knowing that the Dragons only seem to be able to attack down the right edge. Um, if I knew that, I definitely would not have put that bet on. Yeah, yeah, because like, Lomax did get a try, but rather lower um, did not. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the next game was the Sharks Storm game, another one that I jumped on early uh, and was pretty happy about jumping on early because I got a six and a half line. That line dropped into one and a half uh, about this time around Tuesday, Wednesday. And then when Nico Hines was ruled out, it went straight back out to six and a half. Uh, at the when Nico was out, I probably would have still been happy to play six and a half. So I wasn't too upset about the line shifting around as it did, but just obviously it's not as good that, that six and a half line without Nico in there. But um, yeah, was, the Sharks still got it done quite comfortably. So yeah, very happy with my bet in this one. What did you have in this game? Yeah, so I had the Sharks head to head, but I also had Ronaldo, who's having a very quiet game to be fair. Uh, kind of quite a, quite a couple of games. And I also had Hazleton to score. Unfortunately, this is the first game that Hazleton hasn't scored a Hayes million tries. And uh, Molotalo continues his dry streak. Um, rather disappointing, but I'm glad I tipped the winning team in this one. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, we can both agree the Sharks were definitely the team in this one. Uh, moving on to the next game, the Roosters versus the Warriors. Another big score from the Roosters in this one. I think there was some uh, record about going three weeks with scoring 40 points each week. So uh, very impressive from the Roosters. Um, for myself, I did have the Warriors over 14 and a half points. Pretty much what I spoke to was what happened. I said the last two weeks, the Warriors, uh, sorry, the last two weeks, the Roosters oppositions have scored 18 points, even though they've been pumped. Uh, so the 14 and a half line was a good line, uh, regardless of, regardless of whether you think the Warriors are a good sniff to win. Uh, and that, that turned out to be true. So that either way, like the young, I was playing the Warriors, which may not have been the better team, but the, the bet still won. So that's just, I think, a, a smart way to bet the game. What about yourself? Yeah, so I had what you would call the dumb way to bet this game. I had the Roosters 13 plus, Young, Crichton and May anytime at $70.50. and fifty cents. Um, so I saw some sense prior to this game, and I thought I would duck back. Thought I would play a smarter bet just to kind of cover that one, and that was Roosters thirteen year plus and Dom Young at I believe I think three dollars I got. So that obviously got up. Um, Young and Crichton both scored doubles, but uh, May did not look like scoring at all. So rather disappointingly, I did not win seven hundred dollars off the one bet. But again, this is why I can't you know eventually statistically I will get one of these bets. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, those boys are going to be big super coach options this week and moving forward, both Young and Crichton. Yeah, I, I don't see how you can play super coach and not have those in your team. Yeah. Uh, the final game of the round was the Titans Cowboys. Very, I think it's frustrating or very tense game to watch what, whatever side you were on. We both were on opposite sides of this one. We did have a side bet on this. And, um, yeah, I mean, for myself, I, I, I was on the Cowboys minus three and a half. Incredibly, incredibly frustrating game to watch. Cotter dropped the ball over the line. Val Holmes dropped the ball over the line. Valame out of position, dropped the ball. Like, it's just yeah, very frustrating it Cowboys cool team. To watch. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. And then, of course, as well, like the Cowboys should have come back there. They had the Titans were absolutely gassed. They had no bench left. And you could just tell they were just struggling to basically hold position at some points. Yeah. Um, at one point, I think all they had to do was run straight and score, but they chose to pass it back infield. Um, you hate to see that, but to be honest, I love to see it. I had Titans head to head and Fafita any time. Um, that was my one bet of the week, and of course, it's the last game of the round. Yeah. Uh, so thankfully, it saved me. 
I think you've won a fair few last game of the rounds this seed. Like, I think you won at least three or four of the last game of the round. I think you'll Maybe. find the majority of my bets, probably like 80 plus, that actually get up are either the first or last round. Yeah. So maybe everyone should just follow your the last bet of the round. Oh, strong agree, strong agree. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I was having a pretty good week going into this game, and then that one was incredibly frustrating to watch. But just to as a takeaway from the game, you shouldn't be too high on the Cowboys or, or too high or low on either team, basically, because obviously that late comeback was due to all the injuries for the Titans, and then that obviously the Cowboys' inability for to score points was just drop ball and that's something they can fix yeah, up definitely. pretty easily. So I, I would say the injuries are something that need to be taken into account with the Titans, but we'll get yeah. into that later. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that uh, in this week's uh, games. Um, so just firstly, before we do that, we'll touch on the side bets of the round. What do you mentioned the Cowboys one, which I which I lost, but uh, the other two, I, I guess I'll let you take the way. So think about this. The Golden State Warriors, three to one lead. And just like them, you blew it. So first, uh, first, uh, oh, sec- first side bet, of course, was that last game. Um, we basically did head to head. My team got up, being the Titans. The next one was points, as in just total super coach points for the round. Do you want to give your total for the round? I had one thousand and fifty-one with a, a Scotty drink captain. Just some absolute shockers in there, but also some good scores in like a Dom Young and a. And Gussie Crichton and stuff like that, but yeah. Yeah, uh, I had to captain Gussie Crichton this week because of a late out from Nico Hines. I had an emergency, and I still got 1085. Yeah, it, it turned out to be very good for you, the Gussie, Gussie Crichton captain there. Um, so you got yeah, me. and then finally, last one was Blaze Tolungi. Mm. It was total points under over 60. Do you know how many points he got? Yeah, 93, I think. Indeed. Frustrating, frustrating week for myself. Um, but I'll uh, I'll be back better than ever this week in the, in the side bets. So. I, I doubt it. I highly doubt it. Well, um, so tell us in the comments what should the punishment be? This magic yeah. round, yeah. Uh, the head will end up doing it. We just need something that you know is actually somewhat capable. We're not going to be flying to Antarctica to kiss a penguin or something like that. But yeah. leave it. Let us know what we should do. Yeah, yeah. Let us know what we'll do, and then we'll uh, we'll start some new new side bets moving forward. Uh, we'll have some probably some big ones for the for the magic round period. Uh, let's quickly discuss our super coach ranks. So for myself, uh, like I mentioned, I got one thousand fifty one. I've fallen down two thousand places to around twenty four thousand, just just better than twenty four thousand. Uh, what about you? What about yourself? I am slowly catching up after having some pretty shocking rounds. I am now thirty four thousand nine hundred and thirty up another 2,000 after my 1085 last week. Um, I'm getting there. I'm getting better. I'm slowly building my team, but I keep on getting sh- just kneecapped by injuries. Yeah, yeah. It's weird when you haven't, you like, you had a decent round this round and then you'd lost in the in our league and I had a pretty, I had a worse round and I, I, I still got a win, so. Yeah, I lost to last place as well. Yeah. But I was he, first coming into this week and I lost to last place. Yeah. But he's been unlucky. The good boy yeah. last time. Yeah, I know he definitely has. Shout out, shout out, Braden. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So now I've moved into first in the in the Super Coach League. I'll just shout myself out, but it's probably a bit undeserved with with some poor scores, uh, in there for that first place. But yeah, hopefully I can hold that first place and hopefully my rank improves. Let's jump into the you won't bets. Be holding it for long, don't worry. <laughs> Let's jump into the bets for this week. We've got a brand new segment this week. Uh. It's the head and heart bet of the week. So this is, I guess, when you combine your head and your heart, you've got a you got an absolute lot. Um, do you want to announce what the head and the heart best bet of the week is for this week? Yep. I just want to, before I start this, I would like the viewers to guess which part's the head and which part's the heart. I'm not going to clarify which one. So the bet is Titans under 18 and a half total points. And then the second leg is Dom Young and Angus Crichton to combine for three plus tries, and this is totaling seventeen dollars and ten cents. That is going to be huge when that gets up. It it obviously is because this is the first time ever doing it. So I lock in, put your house on it. It's a, it's a lock. It's absolutely lock. Um, we'll jump into our personal best bets, and this might give give away what um what what who had uh, each each leg here. So. For, for myself, my personal best bet uh, is 
the Titans under 19.5 total points. You can find that on points bet at $1.88. Uh, just quickly, I like the Titans under points because they're playing the Knights. The last three games the Knights have played, their opposition have gone under this points total. Titans halves currently are Randall and Beryls, so I don't see very much uh, uh, creativity and points coming out of that pairing. Um, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty simple one for myself. Makes a lot of sense. What about your best bet for this round? I hear you've got a special best bet. I'm cooking up a storm. Uh, you see, it is magic round, right? And what is more magic than light around? So what I'm doing is I am picking one player that has their name that starts with M each game and they will score. So I've got Matt Timakor, Ezra Mam, Greg Marzu, Ronaldo Militalo, Murray Talangi, Taylan May. Sorry, no. Yeah, Taylan May. Yeah. The right, that's the right May. Uh, Mike Acevo and Mark Nichols to score a try in their respective games. And that is going to $2,000 and 88. Wait, so I repeat that again. My apologies. I mistook the odds of this one. It is actually $2,088. And that is odds with a power play on top. And it's magic round, so this thing is just unbelievably good. Yeah, sounds very safe. Pretty, it's very safe. Put the house on it. This is how you become a millionaire, folks. Yeah, yeah. Lock that in. Um, Dude. We'll jump into trades for this round because there's been a lot of carnage. Obviously, uh, you've got your, your players like your Cleary, your SJ, your Turbo yeah. uh, out for this round. So a lot, of, a lot of carnage in terms of trades. For myself, I do have those three plays, Cleary, SJ, Turbo. Um, so obviously I've used all my boosts. So I can only trade two of those out for this week. I have to trade one of my halves because I need a playing half. So first trade out would be SJ. And then I'm currently undecided on whether I go sort of a safer option in Sam Walker that a lot of people are on, or the other option I'm looking at is Jock Madden. Just in terms of why I like Jock Madden, his first game he played this season, he had a 33 uh, against Penrith. And then since then he's had something like a 58, a 76, and a 78, or something like that. So he's averaging very strongly uh, in in recent games. His form looks really good as well. The eye test is is definitely there, and obviously uh, the Broncos are going to score a lot of points uh, moving forward. And then Sam Walker is sort of the obvious trade-in. He's the highest trade-in in, and with, with all the other players that are out injured, uh, he, he makes sense. Uh, it might even come down to, like, for example, if Nico's out, I might be more likely to trade in Sam Walker, but at the moment, I'm, I'm undecided. And then, sorry, just quickly, the other one was uh, I'm going turbo to Cooler. So Cooler obviously getting the fullback spot. Uh, that's obviously like the fullback spot at Manly or pretty much always does well. When Garrick's there, he does well. Cooler had a couple of games there at the end of last season and he absolutely teared up. He averaged like 100 or something. Um on top of that, I do have Garrick. So worst case, Cooler isn't playing that well, switches back to center, and then I'll have Garrick that goes to the fullback position and he'll do well for myself. So either way, it's a bit of a win-win. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm happy with that trade there. And what about yourself? Yeah, so I am trying to improve my team. Last week I had just under a million dollars spare cash sitting around. Um, so I kind of have to fix some holes, but I am going from Schiller to Dom Young. Imagine not having him. I, I think it'd be insane not having him in your team right now. And I'm also going to Mario Martin, who I think it's time to ditch him to back to Dylan Brown now that he's playing good footy. Yep. Any, any thoughts on those? I think they're safe. That's all. Yeah, reasonably safe. Um, I guess we can just talk to what we think generally our, our best trades are for the round. But probably I'll, I'll speak to yours quickly. Dom Young is tough for me to evaluate because I obviously brought him in last round and he's made 135K since then. But yeah, I think he's still probably a trade in. Does play round thirteen, doesn't play round fourteen, so you got to be wary of that. But yeah, he, he's still a, a good player. Maybe yeah, there's like, better options, but yeah, like it's you definitely can't. I brought him in because I had that so much money spare that I just wanted Dom Young in my team. I was willing to yeah. pay a million dollars for him if I needed to. Yeah, yeah, uh, and then in terms of the six conundrum, because I have uh, tomorrow Martin as well, I'll definitely be looking to trade him out. My think, my thoughts on the six though. If you have the other, if your other six decent and you can play him like I have uh I have Galvin and I'm okay to play him for the next couple of rounds, I would think to hold and wait for round thirteen because um there's going to be an announcement on teams uh and you'll find out 
if Burton actually plays Origin, and I actually prefer Burton if he's not playing Origin. So you'll you'll not know for certain after round twelve if Burton's playing Origin, then I think you trade either one of Dylan Brown or, or Matty Burton into your team that round. It may result in Tamari Martin losing fifty hundred K, but I have, I'm willing to pay that fifty hundred K to get more clarity. Uh, around the origin period and what, what's happening around that origin period. And also, you'll know if Moses is playing origin as well, and that can affect how, how well Dylan Brown performs. So yeah, I, I just prefer waiting until then for, the, for, for five yeah. eights at least. Understandable, yeah. Um, so in regards to that, though, what other big trades should be people looking to make this round? Yeah, I mean, so everyone's, most people are going to be, a lot of people have uh, turbo, so... I think the obvious trade of fullback is drink water, but I already have drink water. So if you want a fullback, uh, drink water. The other fullbacks people might look at, your Dylan Edwards, your Reese Walsh, is you have to be wary that there's, or Reese Walsh will play Origin, but Dylan Edwards, there's that Origin risk uh, that, that he might play as well. So just, yeah. just take that into account. You can take the risk and go someone like a Dylan Edwards, but especially with Cleary out, he's going to be very good. But um it, it is a risk at the end of the day. Like, you, you very well could play Origin. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, if I knew for a fact Dylan Edwards wasn't playing Origin, he'd probably be my number one target at that at that fullback position. Definitely understandable. Um, what would you say about potentially playing Armstrong in the fullback position instead? Trying to yeah. save some money, would you possibly do that? Completely fine, yeah, yeah. So, basically, I'm trading in Fuller and he's a centre-wing fullback. So, it's essentially, if you have Armstrong there, it's essentially the same thing. You can definitely look to trade in a centre-wing and, and put like an Armstrong or an Hero back there uh, in the fullback position. Yeah, that's definitely fine. Um, any any other plays that you wanted to touch on in terms of big trade ins this week? Well, I think as well if you don't have Blaze Talangi, if you do have some cash and you want to make a, a, some quick cash, knowing that Gutho is now up for another four weeks, I think it is. Yeah, I think Blaze Talangi is a must pick at least in the short term. He absolutely killed it last week with a ninety three. He's gone up to I think is it three. 60 or 390k? I know it's... Uh, yeah, around, I think 390 sounds right. Three, no, 319, sorry. 319, okay, never mind. So he will probably raise another 100k per week, I think, just comfortably at this point, given he's got such a high score. But um, if you don't need the cash, I probably wouldn't worry about him too much. Again, he is not a long-term option at all, but he's definitely right right for picking short term. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's a really tough sort of decision on, on Talangi because Gutho will be back for... It's listed here round 14, so it, it's probably a tough one on whether you need to trade him or not. I or I held him, luckily, so um, I think you have him as well, right? correct? Yeah, I had him prior to this as well. I, I yeah. held. Yeah, yeah, so that's just a good result, realistically, and like, you can just trade to long me out in a few weeks, but I, it wouldn't be the top of my trading targets. I'd probably prefer um, a David Armstrong or uh, a cooler if you want to go a little bit more expensive. Understandable. Um, yeah, in terms of some sort of speaking, spoken to that, I don't, don't really love trading in five eights this week. Um, in terms of half options, so that just is basically how risky you want to go, like whether a walk or a Madden. Um, yeah, and then in terms of other positions, uh, yeah, we can sort of get into those more, um, when we go through each game, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so uh, let's jump into the first game of the round, the Raiders versus the Bulldogs. Uh, not heaps of super coach options in this one, but probably the big one is uh, is Matty Burton at the six. He's probably one of the two options that people are looking at. What do you think of Burton's recent form and, and his origin prospects as well? Look, I love to see the fact that he's doing more than just kicking bombs now, so that's really fun to watch. Um, he's doing really well in super coach. His team's doing well. I think he's a genuine option at six. Uh, for New South Wales, though, I'm still undecided. I'm kind of hoping that he doesn't play just so I can pick him up in super coach. But again, he may not be playing the best foot if he doesn't get picked. Like maybe he might become a bit demoralized by that. We don't know. But what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I think he's a very good sniff to get picked with the injuries that are currently there. You'd have to think it'd be Nico or Moses at, at seven, and then it could be the other one at six. But I, I think it's. Probably the, yeah. the next up after those two is is Matty Burton. So I wouldn't be shocked if he got picked. But like it's hard to know how Matt is going to pick if he's going to go on form or if he's going to go on, uh, you know, pedigree. So and keep in mind as well, he could very well be picked at center like he was like a couple of years ago as well. 
I would be very surprised if he got picked at center with we still Look, have some I, I think it's yeah, very much better options than him, but again, they could just happen. It could happen again. Yeah, yeah. No, I would be surprised if he got picked, out, especially over someone like a Crichton or a Best or even a Tucker. Yeah. Uh, I would take all of those three above him at center. Um, but yeah, so we, I've already mentioned I prefer waiting two weeks, but like if you're willing to take a risk, think you that won't get picked, then by all means. Um, Jacob Carraz had a hundred on on the weekend. Is he some of the interest you in the in the center? Uh, he, to be honest, I haven't really thought about him at all. Um, I think is that the big is that the first big score he's had though in a while? I know well, he's, he's scored a few scores, but he's yeah, he's very up and down. So yeah, he, from memory, he's not consistent enough for me to consider him. I know he's got a very high high ceiling. He can score a lot of tries. He'll do a lot of line breaks, but again, there's the games where he's just unbelievably quiet. And we've we've seen that this year. We saw it last year where he was obviously recovering from injury, but he wasn't setting the world on fire and he wasn't really doing enough to keep his spot either, which is pretty sad to see. Again, again he was injured, so I mean, yeah, for, for seven he's almost seven hundred K and he's like he had a hundred on the weekend, forty eight the week four, hundred and one, and then it's 73, 41, 36. It's hard to know exactly where he's at, and I definitely prefer someone like a, like a dog young. Uh, yeah, so he's quite to... literally up and down week to week. Uh, that That is just nowhere near comfortable enough for me to pick him. Yeah, yeah. If you want to go someone at, a, at that higher price point, I prefer a dog young or a bit lower. I prefer like a, a cooler. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not super interested in Kraz. Probably a one of the last players we can touch on, unless there's anyone else you can think of, is is Kaya Weeks. Obviously, he's in the five eight position, and uh, he will have a low break even. I can look into that. But is Kaya Weeks someone that interests you at all? Uh, look, to be honest, ever since their massive injuries to Fogarty, I have been slowly trying to get away from as many Raiders players as I can. Their attack was absolutely shot without him, and they're slowly recovering, but. I just don't see the appeal of Kyle Weeks, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, he had a 70 or he had a 69 on the weekend and his break even is a negative 22. So in terms of 5-8 trading options, if you were to go in this week, I don't hate it. Uh, but yeah, for mine, it, it, I'd, much, I'd much rather just wait in the 5-8 and, and see what happens in a couple of weeks' yeah, time. Definitely. But yeah, there's definitely, definitely worse trading options at the 5-8 position. Uh, yeah, if definitely. I was going to trade a five eight this week, it would be five weeks that I'm not I'm not trading uh, in the five eight position. Uh, anyone else that you can think to mention and super coach wise, I guess Tim Mako is one that you could look at in the the center wing as well. He's fallen a bit, but um, yeah, I think you already mentioned that you're not keen, and I'm not super keen on on attacking players in the Raiders team when when they don't have Fogarty. Which yeah, definitely. And there's also any Raiders back could very well drop out at any minute. They are stacked in the backs. So it's really weird to see, but they just aren't getting attacking. They just aren't getting attacking points at the moment. I mean, I don't think Tim has ever any chance to to drop out, but the rest of them pretty much all could. I mean, you have Albert Hopewade playing eighteen. You've got Schiller, who isn't named because he's been he's he's leaving at the end of the year. Why would you possibly name him? And I think you've got one or two more uh, like. Basically, one through five slept in that team as well. They're all yeah. pretty good. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, Tim McCoy is a, is a level above, I believe. Um, but yeah, I'm still not super interested at this point in time. If he keeps falling in price, maybe um, he becomes more interesting as some of the other players in the center wing we've already mentioned are. Um, let's jump into betting in this one. What did you have uh, in this game? Yeah, look, I think this is going to be pretty disappointing from a Raiders perspective. I think the Dogs will probably win comfortably. And I think I'm just going to have a punt here. I'm going to say Adokar and Sherry score. So Dogs, Adokar and Sherry at 675. Yeah, um, I don't mind that bet. Uh, for myself, you obviously not thinking you would see it in, if you'd see Raiders home game and you'd, You'd think Raiders would be the play, but it's obviously Magic Round, yeah, so it's Magic in some yeah. So that that Raiders home game is irrelevant. Uh, I like the Dogs minus two and a half in this one. Dogs have been humming really well, uh, pretty much full strength. Kurt Mann at 13 looks really good for them. Um, and, yeah, obviously we can talk to to some of the Raiders, uh, some of the downsides of the Raiders team. 
on top of that as well, the Raiders are off a win, the Dogs are off a loss, so more likely that the Dogs will be up for this one. So, yeah, I really like the Dogs yeah. minus two and a half in this spot. You can get that on sports bet at $1.93. Yeah, look, the way I see the dogs is you could lock them into the eight if they had literally anyone at halfback other than Drew Hutchinson. Like, that man just takes the ball. He ruins every attacking play he gets his hands on. If they had someone who could just pass the ball to the winger, I genuinely think they would be in a better position. Yeah, I think Sexton's been going all right as well. So I don't know why he's not getting game time, but oh well. Yeah, big um, Sexton. Let's jump into the next game, the Seagulls-Broncos. Uh, obviously, some big outs in this game. Notably, Turbo, the biggest out. Um, Supercoach wise, I've already spoken to Cooler. Uh, he, I'm a massive fan of his work. He, I remember he had to score like 160 or something crazy like that at the back end of last year when he was playing fullback. And um, yeah, I, I'm a massive fan of the trade in anyway, but with Garrett and the team, I'm, I'm an even bigger fan of the trade in. Um, do you have anything to add on on Cooler or Gary? Not really. Um, I'm disappointed with Garrick at the moment. Do you think his scores will rebound or have we seen him peak? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I think you'll definitely see a rebound from last week. Uh, he's kicking goals at the end of the day, so he, he's going to have a, a decent minimum base from, from just goal kicking. I hope to see him run the ball a bit more uh, with, with Turbo out. Uh, but yeah, it, it's a hold to wait and see with Garrick. Um, yeah, you definitely don't need to be looking at trading out or doing anything fancy with Garrick in your team, especially with all the other things you have to worry about. Um, yeah, definitely. Look, I'm just kind of worried without Turbo, their attack, the Eagles might be shot. But I guess if they still have DCA, who's probably their main attacking weapon, it's probably not going to be too much of a negative, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, no, no real other massive trade-ins in Seagulls. Obviously, Turbo is a, is a trade-out. We... I've already started to speak to some of the other options to trade in. One of the highly traded in players is Reese Walsh. What do you think of trading in Reese Walsh this week? I am just kind of concerned. He's going to be starting fullback for Queensland. That's that's basically a lock at this point. Yep. Um, so when will that New South when will that when do the Origin teams go away? Is it the start of week twelve or week thirteen? Yeah, it's the Monday going into round thirteen that they'll be announced. Okay. Yeah, um, I'll just have a look. Are the Broncos playing? But regardless, there's no there's a there's a Zero percent chance Reese Walsh is not named. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you're guaranteed missing him for 13, 16, 19. Could could have minutes managed. They have Tristan Saylor as well. So I wouldn't yeah, be well, shocked. Tristan Saylor's him. actually out injured at the moment. So he yeah, might I'm be saying, to play. Yeah. I'm saying like 14, 17, 20. It, there's a there's a small chance that Tristan Saylor could play one of those games or some of those games uh, just to manage Walsh and make sure he doesn't pick up any any more injuries. It's unlikely, but there is a small chance. So picking up Walsh now, I'm not a fan of. If you have him already, then that's great. But, um, yeah, definitely not a fan of picking him up this week. Would much rather go to, like, a center wing option or, a, like, a cooler or, or a drink water or someone like that than, than Reese Walsh for, my, for myself. Yeah, so let's take a quick look at round 14. And the Broncos are playing at 7.35 on the Saturday. So I'd say there's probably about a 50-50 chance of him actually playing that game. Um, if Tristan Saylor is fit, though, I don't see why you would possibly play him. Which round was that, sorry? That's round 14. Yeah, yeah. So, I guess that's a, a wait and see. Um, the the other one, I'll just speak a little bit more to, to Jock Madden because I did mention him and that might have sort of seemed shocking that I... I yeah, you've got me to my surprise, to be honest. So, speak on. Tell me why I should be looking at Jock Madden of all players. Yeah, yeah. So as I mentioned, he got a 33 against the Panthers in round three. Uh, he's played in round six, seven, and eight. Uh, and he scored a 59, a 78, and a 76 in those games. We know the Broncos can score points easily, and he's going to be a massive part of those points. If you look at him in person, he looks so, so much more improved than previous years. Uh, and I think it will average closer to the, the more recent three games. Regardless, playing Penrith, you're not going to average that as well anyway. But, yeah, I, I think you'll definitely be averaging some of the, closer to some of those better games. You have to take into account he doesn't play 13 or 16 because they have a buy in those rounds. So you've got to work your buy planning around that. But for myself, I have plenty of players around 13. I'll be able to work in players around 16. I'll My other half, I'll be 
trying to trade in a player that's playing round 16 anyway. Uh, on top of that, he has a zero break even. He's going to make money. So, yeah, there's lots of there's lots of positives to, to Jock Madden, but there's obviously lots of risks like that there's, there's halfbacks in that are, that are absolute studs. But, yeah, I, uh, I couldn't knock you if you went Jock Madden in this one. Understandable. Um, do you want to anyone anyone else you want to mention at all? Uh, there's players that are fairly obviously good, like your pain horses and stuff, but they're fairly obviously going to play Origin as well. So yeah, you know, look, all, all I'll say is I am so glad Homole Olakowatu is finally back. I am cannot wait for him to start in my team. He was out for two weeks the other week. I got brought him in. So uh, would you say he's a final kind of? Final kind of player is he worth bringing in now, or would you rather just wait and see to see if he gets picked as well? I'm reasonably confident he plays Origin, so I wouldn't be looking at him myself. But um, yeah, like end of the season, I'll definitely be looking at him. Uh, he's he's one of those players that can can score very very well uh, at points in time. But yeah, definitely not a trade in yeah, anytime yeah. soon. Uh, I guess maybe one of the other five eights people might look at is Ezra Bam, but I still. Not a, not a fan at all. Um, like he, he generally scores really, really poorly, super coach wise, even though he looks good in games and can create some spark for them. Just not a super coach option at all. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, yeah, so any other players, or should we move straight to the betting for this one? Let's jump into the betting. What do you have in this one? Yep. So I've got Broncos, Walsh, and Garrick. Anytime try scorers at $6. Got Garrick didn't score last week. I think his streak will continue. Um, Walsh seems to be a lock anytime the Broncos look firm, and I think the Broncos can get very firm in this game. So um, that's my that's my bet for the game. Yeah, no, not a bad bet for mine. Obviously, looking at the line, uh, it's the Broncos minus eleven and a half. They've won by more than eleven and a half in five of the six wins they've had this season, and the one time they didn't win by more than that, they won by ten. So. If you like the Broncos to win, I would be pretty confident to take the Broncos line. Um, for myself, the reason I'm not playing it is because I don't think the market will miss the Broncos in this one. Uh, it's the Broncos in Brisbane at Magic Ground. Everyone's going to be thinking that they win that game. And uh, obviously, there's, there's the outs of Turbo for Manly, which everyone will generally overreact to because of how big of a name Tom Trevojevic yeah, is. No, I completely understand. Like, he's... He is an attacking weapon, but he's not really Manly's main attacking weapon, is he? Yeah, um, well, I mean, he probably is their main attacking weapon, but um, I just think people generally will, will read too much into how big of an out it is, especially when Paul has been solid uh, at fullback and then they get all Kawhi back this week as well. So for mine, I'm just not betting on the game, but um, I can understand uh, someone playing either, either side in this one. I just cannot see any chance of Manly winning, to be honest. I think, I think the Broncos steamroll. I know exactly what you said, where the market's probably going to trust the Broncos a bit more because they're at home, but I just don't see a world where they don't win about maybe 10, 13 plus. Yeah, I mean, and that's probably a likely outcome considering they, they seem to put teams away pretty well. So, uh, yeah, could understand betting on that. Um, the next game, game of the round, Titans versus the Knights. Obviously, uh, it's close to a Titans home game because it is at Suncorp, so they might have a bit of an advantage in that one. But in terms of super coach, absolute carnage for the Titans. Uh, if you had AJ Brimson, you'd be pretty devastated that he is out now as well. Um, but yeah, any super coach options that you like to trade in for this one? Yeah. Um. So for this one in particular, I really want to hit Greg Marzu. He's 513k, I believe, this round. Yeah. Um, he seems to have bottomed, bottomed out in price, but um, he seems to have finally gotten back into the groove. He's scoring tries. He's fending off people like no money. I'm um, like, like a young... Never mind. I forgot what I was going to try to say there. But basically, yeah, he is absolutely killing it now. Um, the only issue that I have with bringing him now is that the Knights have a buy next round. So I don't want to bring in a player just to play one game and then have him sit out again. Yeah, I mean, that just comes down to the depth of your squad. I don't really have any issue bringing in Greg Myers, you considering, uh, for myself, I have a lot of squad depth in the center wing, um, but and he does play round 13, so you can factor that in. Uh, but, yeah, he's currently the seventh most, seventh highest traded in center wing, but, yeah, 
line, I prefer someone like Kula, even maybe a far longer, which we can speak to in that game. But yeah, he's been solid and I definitely can't knock the trade in. He's going to base decently well, but without Ponga there consistently sweeping to the left and, and hitting him on the chest, it's less of a trading option for mine. Uh, definitely agree. Yeah, if you don't already have Armstrong, it's still a trading option. Uh, for feeder, I would still say I've been saying consistently he's not a trading option, and then he's consistently been putting up scores. Yeah. So that's I know, right? I really want him so badly. Yeah. He is putting out absolutely huge scores just regularly. There's no stopping him. Yeah. But again, it's so hard to justify bringing him in when you know he's going to play Origin for the next four games, and he's getting more and more expensive. Like I considered bringing him in this week, and then I thought, is it really worth it? And then I just ended up not doing it. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, but like if you haven't got him already, don't like basically don't get him. Like he yeah, it's not working it. very soon. So um yeah, outside of that, in terms of trade outs, uh, we already mentioned the Kai Pierce Paul uh as a trade out option. Uh what do you think on Kai Pierce Paul in terms yeah, of trade He's not going to be playing long minutes now, which is really annoying. He doesn't seem a high-impact player like a Hazleton where the minutes don't necessarily matter. Um, unfortunately, I just don't think he's worth playing anymore. Um, maybe if you want to hold him for a couple of weeks, see if his minutes do improve. But otherwise, if you have a spare 300k, I'd go straight to the feeder, to be honest. Even if yeah, the for mine, uh, like obviously I've got lots of issues in my team, so he's not a trade out anyway, but I, I don't mind him being a hold because he does have the buy next week. So you're going to only lose value this week and then uh, you can you can continue to hold him after next week. Um, so there's that. And then he does play round 13. So if anything happens, you hold him this week, you lose maybe 50K at worst. Uh, and then he has the buy. And then if something happens, like there's an injury to, to a Frizzell or a Lucas, uh, then... He'll get extended minutes in, and it'll be a it'll be a good great number for round thirteen. So I don't mind him as a hold for now, but yeah, definitely a player that I would be looking uh, to sell either round thirteen or fourteen or something around that point in time. Also, don't forget there's a very real chance of Frizzell also playing Origin as well. He could come off the bench, so yep. that would mean that Pierce Paul would have minutes in round thirteen at the very least. Yeah, yeah, and and Frizzell's supposed to have an injury injury this week, so he could be who yeah, knows this week and then. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be too confident in this one. If you think the Knights are pro- kind of overplaying their inju- oh, underplaying their injuries, I'd even suggest getting on the Titans line. Um, if you could possibly get on Betfair um, and you know those three guys are going to get out, you can make some serious money without actually playing playing the bet before the game. Yeah, yeah. So, so what I mean is if you could cash out prior to, if you expect those players to be out, you can make some serious money betting on that line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. Um, yeah, so we've sort of given our thoughts on the players that, in terms of super coach, you just want to jump into your bet in this game? Look, I assume that all three players who are potentially out for Newcastle are going to play. So I'm going Knights 13 plus, Armstrong, Mazu, and Best to score at 15.75. Yeah, fair enough. Um, for myself, like obviously, uh, Knights fans, I try to be as objective as possible, but uh, looking at this Titans team, Obviously, they've got Randall and Verrills in the halves currently. Uh, Weaver's in the extended, but even if Weaver's playing in the halves, I don't expect their attacking output to be great. So my best bet of the round was the Titans under 19.5 uh, total points. So whereas they may may show up defensively, have a decent defensive game, I don't see them putting out uh, a heap of points. So I, I love that sort of 19, 18 and a half, anything under that. Uh, that three converted tries, I'm I'm happy to jump on. Um, yeah, and obviously the Knights have been very strong defensively recently. The rain obviously is a factor of that, but I mean, like 14 points conceded versus the Tigers, eight against the Warriors, 14 against the Dolphins. Um, strong yeah. defensive unit. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So, um, yeah, definitely keen on the on the under 19 and a half in this one. Uh. Let's jump into the next game, though. Uh, the Sharks versus the Roosters. Heaps of talking points, super coach wise. A uh, few injuries to mention. So, obviously, Nico Hines potentially out for this one as well, but he has been named. Uh, and then Joey Manu has been has not been named. Uh, 
In terms of Joey Manu is still one of the higher traded in players this round, so he's someone that you're looking at. Just be wary that he hasn't been named. Uh, Nico Hines. If you're a Nico Hines owner, what would you be doing with your halves right like this week? I think my halves at the moment are Luke Brooks and Nico Hines. So to avoid an emergency, I think I have to start Luke Brooks this week. Yeah. Um, let's say you're in the position. That's because where you might... Manly's playing. Sorry, you just dropped out for a second. What was that? You good? I didn't, I didn't say anything. I basically just said that uh, my two halves were Luke Brooks and Nico Hines. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, so I just um, to sort of expand on that, if you had like a Nico Hines and, a, and an SJ or a Cleary, um, would you be sort of just trading out like an SJ Cleary to like a Sam Walker or someone like that? To be honest, I think you have to. Um, so is SJ gone long term or is it five, six weeks? Uh, either way, I'm not really to peck, so I'm not. It's, it won't be long term, but um, either way, I'm sort of keen to trade him out because the A does that, and then B, he's had he has that niggly injury as well that could reduce his minutes. So I'm just keen to get rid of him and not have the headache anymore. If I had uh Hines and then SJ. Theory, I'd be trading with which of SJ Cleary uh, out and then making sure I'll, Sam Walker or whoever is, is starting. And then if needed, I can have um, the Hines as the reserve and then you can just take the reserve off him. Um, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, ju just be very wary if you have Hines. Keep in touch with the team list and, and wait and see what, what happens there. But you don't need to trade it out at all. Um, but, and, yeah, I mean, the other half you should be trading in is someone that uh, hopefully doesn't play um, doesn't play Origin. Uh, in terms of other plays in this one, Eero is uh, is highly owned. He's killing it. I love it. I love to see a cash cow do well. Um, he he's he's basically locked down that spot. He's essentially kicked out Talakai, which is so funny to see. Like remember Talakai being one of the most underrated centers in the game, and now he's been kicked out by a like a nineteen twenty year old. I would say Talakai is maybe one of the more overrated centers in the game, considering he has like games where he has those massive tackle rusts and then been more quiet recently. But yeah, no, I, I think he's still underrated. He has an insane amount of try assists from last season. Continue on to this season as well, but it also probably does help the fact he's playing outside Molotalo, who can score from anywhere. Yeah, I mean, I don't think many people so playing inside Molotalo. Don't rate him. I think he's the, I think he's worse than Ramian. So I, I, I would. No, I'm from Raymond. Is... Spot Newcastle. Ramian's one of the worst players in the league. Shouldn't yeah, be there. Sure. Cancel Ramian. Cancel him. Um, I still boo but... him whenever he comes to Newcastle. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah, no. But anyway, we're getting a bit sidetracked. Euro, obviously, uh, just a whole in terms of other sharks options. I can see that Atkinson is a highly traded in player. Uh, would he be someone that you look at in the as a half or five eight replacement? The problem with Atkinson is you don't know how long. Um, you don't know. Okay. What's his name? I completely, I completely blanked nope. on the uh, the naughty shark boy. Nope. Yeah, bro, sorry, Braden Chandler Trindle. Um, yeah, you don't know how long he's going to be out for. It's entirely disciplinary, so he could just be back next week. Like I am not, I don't think it's a good idea to get on him because I think the week that you get him is that the week, the week before, like Trindle comes back. Yeah, yeah, and I uh, agree because uh, there's actually news that Trindle might be playing this week uh, because there's some missing missing evidence in the in the trial, so. Um, yeah, that he could be playing this week. He's named in the extended, so Atkinson is one. Even though he's at a nice price, he could be a decent option. I would just be very, very wary trading it out. Exactly. That's a if, you, if you're talking Madden's a risky play. That's that's an incredibly high risk play trading in Atkinson. So just be just be aware that uh, he could very easily lose his spot soon if Trindle's if the stuff with Trindle is 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 overall. But obviously he'll still be playing if Hines is playing Origin. So. There is some upside, but just in the halfback spot, I I just want to bank someone that I know is going to be playing week in week out, like a, a Madden or a, or a Sam Walker. Definitely. Um, in terms of, we should probably jump into, and that's oh, you probably want to touch on Hazelton. Yeah, look, um, any other Hazelton is out there? He didn't score last week. 
hold, he will score again this week. Don't worry. We will go back to the mean. Yeah, we, as good. always, everything returns to the mean. Am I right? And right now, the mean is the Hazelton scoring a Hayes million tries. What did he score on the weekend? As he's... He actually scored pretty decently from memory. Um, I think it was still... Yeah, like... yeah. yeah, again, he's only playing 40 minutes, so he's getting some insane point per minute. It doesn't matter how long he's playing for. The, the Hazelton will continue to rise. Yeah, definitely a hold. Um, let's jump into these Roosters options, though. Uh, I made some poor choices last week, but trading in Dom Young was not one of them. Uh, he scored 160-odd in the end. I traded Roger to a check to him, and RTS didn't play, and he's not named for this week. So very, very happy with that trade. Um, sort of already spoke to it last week, but yeah, well, uh, maybe you can speak to why you like to trade him in still at the current price. I think Dom Young is a player that is going to continue scoring tries. Um, look, as it, to me, I had a million dollars saved last round. A player like Dom Young is going to be in your team until the end of the season unless something happens to him. I already traded him out because of that really massive injury. Sorry, not the injury, the suspension. Um, I didn't really want to, but knowing that I didn't have anyone else in that position and I needed that money, I did. Um, so I am getting back on the Young bus and I think his price will continue to rise. So just get on him now while you can. Um, again, he's not going to play State of Origin, so you don't have to worry about that. And the dude's like six foot six. If he finds line, if he finds any space, he's either going to score a try or make a 50 meter line break. Um, he's also very handsome as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah. The pretty obvious player to, to try to own Dom Young there. Um, Tedesco, would he be someone that you look at? I can see people that bring him in for fullback spot. Well, I mean, who else had left? Um, Tedesco, if he doesn't play Origin, I think Tedesco is probably the best choice. Yeah. So that's the exact same sort of thing with. Um, Jill Edwards, like whichever one of them doesn't play Origin is probably a good selection, but we don't, at the end of the day, we don't know which one is going to miss out. So, and of course, just because one doesn't play game one doesn't mean they won't be playing game two or three either. Oh, uh, honestly, if they, whichever one wasn't playing game one, I'd be pretty happy to pick up four uh, in Supercoach because I think it's, if they go with Teddy, like I think it's likely they stick with Teddy because they're obviously trying to select on someone's heritage that's been there and done that. And if they go with Edwards and, like, for example, he has a bad game, I don't think they're going to flip off him after just one game in the Origin uh, arena. Yeah, so. look, um, I didn't mean it in that way. I more so meant that in game one, I think whoever gets picked will do a hamstring. I just have this very what? cursed feeling it's going to happen. Yeah, okay. okay. Like sometime between game one and game three, um, the whistle of game one, I think they'll get injured during the game or they'll get injured prior to game two. That's just how our luck's been this week year as a New South Welshman. <laughs> Yeah, that's it's right. genuinely probably going to happen. Yeah, but either way, Teddy not a trade in for this week. Um, Sam Walker is the number one trade in player this week. Uh, I am tossing up between him and Madden, so I'll just quickly talk to. I mean, I don't really have to talk too much why I like him. He's averaging something crazy over the last couple of weeks. He had 150 and then a 95 on the weekend. Um, so he, he obviously can put the scores on. You have to take that with a grain of salt, though. They're, they're scoring a heap of points, the Roosters. Um, You'd have to think they're sustaining scoring a lot of points for him to be scoring well. But um, it's definitely not impossible that they do uh, sustain scoring a lot of points. The Sharks might not be the team that they do amazingly against, but after this week, they have a pretty decent uh, draw. Um, I'm just pulling that up now. I, I know it is pretty good, but yeah. So they have uh, the Raiders and the Cowboys after, which are a, a Raiders team that hasn't been that great and a Cowboys team that concede a lot of points. And then they've got uh, Dubai and they've got Eels, Bulldogs, Tigers, Dragons. So some some very tasty fixtures in there for Sammy Walker. So I can't knock anyone trading him in. In terms of, yeah, maybe why, why I would be wary of trading him in, uh, look at his scores when they don't put on those massive points. Um, they're a lot lower and he's only averaging 60 for the, for the season with, with some massive scores in there. So if you are trading him in, you have to be sort of wary that he could produce some lower scores. What do you think of him as the trade-in, as a trade-in yeah. option? Look, I, if you don't have the other Roosters players, I'd say go for it. But my problem is I don't want to be too reliant on one team. I already have Young. I brought in Young this week. I already have Cried and I already have uh, May as well. My kind of worry is if, say, the Roosters do badly or they completely implode like the Raiders did, then you're kind of screwed there. You've got four players who are going to not score week in, week out. 
um, all it takes is just a couple injuries or say a couple hard fixtures back to back and the scoring potential of those players drops dramatically. And that's one quarter of your squad. Yep. Especially those more attack and defender players like oh exactly. Crichton's will fall, but like yeah, mainly young and Walker they're gonna fall a lot in uh in the number of points they're scoring. So just something to be wary of. And they they'll all play around fourteen, so something to be wary of in that respect. Um but yeah, like probably the best half trading option for this week. But yeah, just be wary if you have other Roosters players. Uh Joey Manu out. I don't know too much about why he's out, but he's just a hold, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I guess you kind of have to. Um, I'm not sure how long he's out for either. My my biggest concern though is Terrell May. Do you think it's a sell yet or is he just a hold? I already scored 58 on the weekend, so you can't complain at all about that. Um, yeah, the problem is he his minutes are so inconsistent, but you just have to keep on playing him because everyone else is. Like, if you don't, if you're playing in a head to head league, you're guaranteed to be coming up against Terrell May. So, why would you possibly not play him? Yeah, I mean, I just it's, I don't really see much wrong with continuing to play him. Uh, his minutes have been inconsistent, but been in de- decent form recently. So, hopefully, he continues to get, um, continues to get okay minutes. Yeah. <sighs> just looking into Joey Manu now. Oh, it's a concussion, so missing one week. So, yeah, just a hold. Yeah, hold him. Definitely hold him there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so not not selling Terrell May. Uh, anyone else? Oh, Gussie Crichton. Obviously, we can touch on touch on him. I did say sort of last week, don't trade him in. I don't see him as a trading option. And he gets a solid 90. But you have to it's think double. about what that what's what's in that 90, right? You would have been paying 750K for that 90-something. And he's scored a double. Like he's not going to score a double every week, and, and so you, you just have to be super wary. And also, I think he's a very strong chance of playing Origin. So, yeah, it makes it a bit harder. Definitely, I definitely wouldn't be looking at him this week. And if you didn't trade him in last week, off my advice, I wouldn't be that upset because, like, while he will produce those scores in some games, it's it's not going to be every week, and. Um, I don't think you're really getting the value for money that we've got, even though he did have that big score. Understandable. Um, let's jump into bets in this game. Uh, quickly for myself, I don't have anything currently, just waiting on to hear if Nico does play or not. It was confirmed Nico was out. I'd probably happily take the Roosters' current line. I think it's three and a half. Uh, but if Nico's confirmed playing, uh, I, I wouldn't, be, wouldn't be keen on that Roosters' line. Uh, what about yourself? Yeah, so I think the Roosters will probably uh, win this convincingly, no matter where, if Nico is, in, is or isn't playing. I think the Roosters are a better team this year, and I'm still not sold on the Sharks being a great team. So I am going to go Roosters 13+, plus, uh, Crichton and Young, anytime try scorers at 12.25. Yeah, nice. Uh, let's jump in the next game, the Rabbitohs-Cowboys. This is going to be an absolute turd of a game, isn't it? Yeah, seems like a bit of a poo slinger based on both of their current form. Um, in terms of super coach options, like Scotty Drink, obviously, is, is one at fullback. He had a poorer score on the weekend, but I still think if you want an out and out fullback, he's probably uh, your best sort of gun, like more expensive option. I think he scores well this week. Uh, that can sort of speak to my, my bet on that in terms of why I think he does score well. Um, but yeah, your players like your Val Holmes are a hold. Um, obviously, Origin coming up, so you can think about selling him soon. But yeah, I, I just see them like a Val Holmes, Scotty Drink. Well, Val Holmes is a hold, Scotty Drink is a buy. Um, anyone else that you sort of can think to mention in this one? Um, so, Nanai, what's his break even? He had an absolute killer game in the weekend. So, you now. He's someone I would consider bringing in, but only if I know that he's going to continue to go up in value. Yeah, it seems so, like he's getting a lot of ball on that right edge. Yeah, the thing with Nana, he's, he's got a twenty nine break even, so he'll get that. But you've got to take into account, uh, he, I think he's a good chance to play Origin. The, the Queensland back road stocks are, are not super strong outside of the feeder, so I think he probably plays Origin. Um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't be looking at at this point in time, but. 
It's another one of those ones that maybe the Cowboys start to go on a run. You could pick them up at a later point in the season, but yeah, not not an option. Right. Fair enough. Um. Yeah, we can take like some of these, some of these Rabbitohs cheapies, like their half or, or gay by that. I don't, yeah. I don't like any of them as options. That's a quick question: Can you tell me what uh, Latrell Mitchell scored in the weekend? I think he got like seventy odd, something like that. That's that's pathetic. He scored two tries. Did he just really not do anything else other than those two tries? He scored seventy. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, not keen on Latrell. Right. No, not at all. I, I thought he scored way better than that, to be honest. And I was going to go and use him as an example of saying how some players do well in super coach, but not in real life. He had a stinker of a game. And if he's seriously only getting, what, 28 in base stats, that's not good enough to to be in your team. Yeah, no. Like, he, had, he had two tries and a try assist for 70 points. Pretty crazy. That's so bad. What was he doing? Was he just not making runs? Yeah, but not running the ball very much. He had nine no. runs of the ball. Um, but, yeah. People try and be like they're trying to be clever and, and bring in Trell as a as a pod, but just it's not worth it. You need to be clever. Like you can be a lot smarter in other positions. And yeah, Latrell just is not the trade in. The routers still look dire, like within their awful. And to be honest, the dragons they played last week weren't that good. They weren't amazing and yeah, and they, they still won convincingly. So yeah. yeah. So don't go near the trail. Just not an option at all. Um it's not that's probably honestly it in this game. I don't really want to talk too much about either of these teams, super coach wise. Let's jump into our bets. Uh, what do you have in this one? But to be fair, to be honest, I, I, I don't really know, but I hope and pray there's going to be a lot of points in this game. Cowboys are garbage in defense recently. The Rabbitohs are the same. Um, their attacks are okay. So I think a line of over 51 and a half points is actually reasonable. And I think they'll that'll reach it. Um, other than that, I'm gonna go tries to Nanai, Drinkwater, Johnston, and Latrell. Um, that is paying 27.25. Yeah, I mean, I could definitely see points coming from both of these teams. 51 and a half is a lot of points, but yeah, I could definitely see some points in this game for myself. I Look, have... I have... sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to say, I was playing with a try score bingo with this one, just hoping that this game might be somewhat watchable. Yeah. Yeah, no, for myself, uh, I've gone the Cowboys, I've gone a Cowboys manual 1 to 24, so the Cowboys head to head and the Rabbitohs plus 24.5. Um, so if it falls anywhere between that range, that bet will get up. That's on points bet at $1.89. Uh, I think it'll be close because both teams put, a, put up a poor showing last week. So I think they'll both be fired up for this game. Um, hence, uh, like I wouldn't go <clears throat> like a Cowboys line or anything like that. Uh, I prefer, so that, that sort of explains why I've got the Rabbitohs plus 24 and a half. I prefer the Cowboys head to head uh, because I think a lot of their mistakes on the weekend were very fixable, like dropping the ball over the line three or four times. Uh, I think that's something that they can easily change and turn around. I think they'll be fired up to get this win. Uh, I think the Rabbitohs will also be fired up. It's also a not too far to travel for the Cowboys. So, yeah, prefer the Cowboys in this one, but at, at a, not, not at that line, just at the 1-24. to 24. Fair uh, enough. The next game of the round is the Warriors versus the Panthers. Uh, some massive, massive outs in this one that has a lot of effect on Supercoach, Cleary, and SJ being the, the biggest two in, in this game. So both halves could see some disjointed attack in this game. Um. Uh, in terms of, we can talk to Cleary and SJ, but I think they're both trade outs. Would you agree that they're both trade outs? Or yeah, so I strongly agree. Cleary's out for at least eight weeks, I believe it is. SJ is out for I think six. Again, I'm talking about my ass here, but they're both long term enough that you need to get both those players out of the team. And honestly, I'm so sad. I'm so sorry for you for having to carry Cleary for that long, only for him to come back, not actually play, and then finally come back and get injured again long term. Yeah, pretty pretty devastating. Uh, I traded Cleary, and I traded Hines out instead of Cleary at that point in time. Oh, Hines sure. been averaging like a hundred, and then Cleary's just getting injuries, and it's, it's an absolute nightmare. But what can you? In terms of if you have both of them, like you're in my position, I would trade. I'm trading SJ because I think there's a higher chance that SJ comes back sooner, and I basically I just don't want to 
weighing him. Like Cleary can, can sit there and not lose any cash. Whereas I think if SJ comes back in like three weeks or something, um, then uh, then like I'm screwed. Like SJ is probably going to play at 100 percent and um, he's just going to continue to leak cash. So I, I want to get rid of SJ right now, and then I'll get rid of hopefully I can get rid of Cleary in the next couple of weeks, which is. Um, which is the goal, the worst case, you can just sit there and not, not lose any money, which is a lot of money to sit on the bench, but uh, that, that's just a worst case um, situation. But definitely happy for anyone to trade both of them out this week, if you can. Uh, in terms of the players that are actually playing, tomorrow Martin goes to seven, CNK goes to six. Yeah, I can't believe CNK is playing six. He's an absolute turnstile. I'm, I'm genuinely scared about the, uh, the, the defensive line to the middle. Like, I'm actually yeah. really worried about that. I don't think he's the worst defensive fullback ever, but I don't know how we'll go. He's not good. He's not going to go well. Okay, um, look, side bet, I want you to take on this one, that they will score at least two tries, and the Panthers will score two tries through the middle third. I probably will. That's not a... Okay, let's make it three. That would now. be like a dollar. That would be very short. The Panthers... Uh, I don't know if they, even if that... Okay, let's make it three tries from the six, seven, eight, and ten through the middle. Yeah, like I, I'm happy to take like if you want a certain yeah, like six. Like you want pan three tries between the Panthers. What six, seven, eight, nine, ten? Yeah, sure. How's that sound? Yeah, okay, I'll take that as a side bet. Yeah, it's no it, it, it complicated, but it, it'll understand. It'll yeah, I have no idea what the actual odds of that would be, but. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll take that that won't happen as a side bet. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, like, I, I don't know how Charles is going to defend in, in the middle there, but, yeah, um, I guess we'll, we'll wait and see. Uh, in terms of people hold... People have chance just to hold, but I was looking at him as a trade-in, maybe at fullback, but probably not anymore. Uh, to Mario Martin, I, I'm happy for people to trade out, but... I've yeah, I think it's time to get rid of Tamari Martin. He's he's peaked, he's going down. He just hasn't looked like he's had any of the spark in his first two games. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm glad I traded him out now before he goes back to whatever he was previously, to be honest. Yeah, I, I've already mentioned why I'm happy to hold him, but um, just in terms of how, how his price is going to move, I think his price, uh, his break-even is reasonably high, but um, he's, I think he max like, he's 400k, and so if he's scoring 35s every week, he's going to fall to 350k. So I'm not too, yeah, I'm not too cut up if he loses that 50k, but uh, I can understand people wanting to move off him as soon as possible. But I'm just sort of praying that he has some decent scores. And if he doesn't, that's like, I'm willing to lose that 50k and that's that's fine. Yeah, fair enough. Understandable. Um. Yeah, another player as well in the Waz we should probably talk about is Tua Piki. Um, he's finally back. If you have him, you're probably cheering that he's... Well, if you've held him this whole time, which I hope you haven't, um, you're probably cheering he gets another game. Um, I probably wouldn't even consider him. I think he's a bit of a trap, given that Harris Tavita could come back in a couple rounds, and he will push uh, CNK back to fullback, meaning Tua Piki will be once again gone. Yeah, yeah, definitely, um, not yeah, definitely not. Um, are there any other players in the Waz that you yes. like to speak about? Uh, Waz, not particularly like your RTS is to that. I don't see anyone as a massive trade in, in the Waz. The 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 uh, Panthers, though, so Dylan Edwards, um, obviously, is highly traded in. He's going to score very well without clearing the team. So I can understand it as a trading option. Still not an option for myself this week. He's one of the ones that you wait until uh, probably around 13 to trade him in. Just wait and see on the the origin teams, but I love him as a trade in for round thirteen. So keep him in the back of your mind as an option for for a trade in for round thirteen. But this round, not a massive fan of just because I think mean, there's a, a decent chance he plays origin. Yeah, just definitely. Would you worry about that? Um, and then another highly traded in player is Luke Garner because he's got some big scores and um. He's probably one of the highest second row traded ins. You do have to take that with a grain of salt, though, because Scotty yeah. Simonson will be back next week. So. I think he's a bit of a trap, to be honest. He scored two tries, I think, two weeks ago. A try, scored a try again this week, which has artificially pumped up his points a bit. Yeah. Um, can he continue to score tries in the future? I don't know, but I think it's probably going to be a bit of a trap. 
Oh, look, honestly, if um if Scotty Sorensen wasn't back in, I would I would very strongly think about trading him in. But Scotty Sorensen will be back uh, next week, and I think his minutes may be uh, reduced. So just be aware of that if you're trading, looking at trading Garner. Um, Scotty Sorensen will be back shortly. Yeah, definitely. Uh, not too much else to add. Do you have anything else to add on Super Wise? No. So let's get straight back into the betting. Um, so what do you have for this game? Yeah, so I've got the Panthers head to head and the Warriors plus twenty two and a half, which is uh, a manual uh, Panthers one to twenty two. Uh, like the Panthers in a close one in this one because I think their attack will be worse. They've looked okay with Brad Schneider in there uh, attacking wise, but he's out for this week, and I think uh, I think it's Cole that they've got. Yeah, Jack yep, Cole. Jack Cole. And I think he's more of a six, so I don't think they have a clear seven to guide the team around. So I don't think their attack will be as strong. My Panthers are the Panthers are the Panthers. Like, can't really see them losing this game to the Warriors. Um, so well, the Panthers, the Panthers, like you said, yeah, like they're they're an absolute machine, and they find a way to win every game. So I can't really see them losing to the Warriors, but I I couldn't play the Panthers line in this one. So the way to play it from line in what I think will maybe be a lower scoring game than some of the other games this round um, is is a Panthers one to twenty two. Uh, that's what makes the most sense to myself. Even though the the Warriors are missing some some attacking threats, I'll speak I'll speak to SJ actually quickly. So SJ obviously out is a is a loss to the Warriors, but you have to keep into that take into account that SJ when he was playing wasn't playing as well. SJ has played uh, because he's had those niggling injuries. So whereas it is a loss, it's maybe not as big a loss as some people might think. So just take that into account. But yeah, anyway, so I rambled rambled a bit. What do you have in this one? Yeah, look, the way I see it, I think SJ out is a bigger loss than Cleary for an entire squad. I think the Warriors rely on SJ more than the Panthers rely on Cleary. And in that sense, I think the Panthers going to win by 20-plus with Taruva and Garner anytime try scorers. In fact, I am so confident in that I'm willing to take you on the line if you would like for a side bet. Let me check the line. So might actually... As in the line of 20. I'll definitely take you the line of 20, sure. Easy money. <laughs> yeah, right. Keep in mind, this is the you are the same bloke who just lost a, a four and one lead. Oh, sorry, a three to one lead. Yeah, um, I'm going to win this one comfortably. Don't worry. <laughs> What's the actual line? Yeah, I'll happily take the twenty. Um, so I will do nineteen and a half just because that's a bit. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it makes it a bit easier if you want. So minus you've got minus nineteen and a half. I've got the plus nineteen and a half, and then also that that bet on in this game on the. On the um on the six seven eight nine ten um that's probably everything for this game. Uh, do you want to just jump into the next game, the Storm versus the Eels? Yep, that is a very big game. Um, big outs. There's not really any of note that we didn't know about. Um, so. Yeah, I mean this the 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 storm still obviously missing your, like your Pappenhausens, your your Hughes yes. uh, in that team. Uh, Xavier yes. Coates does come back in for them, which is a is a big in. Uh, and then there was some rumors that uh, Mitch Moses was going to play. It didn't end unfortunately up. that hasn't come through. But I still think this Eels team has a chance, don't you? I think they might. I don't know where they're at the season, but I don't see them embarrassing themselves. I yeah, think this storm team's going to underperform. Yeah, yeah, we can uh, we'll speak to that betting wise in a bit in a minute. Uh, let's just talk to Super Coach firstly. Um, I've already spoken briefly to Talangi. We still see him as a sort of a trading option, but uh, you just have to be aware that he's going to be a short term play with with Dutson coming back there. Um, his opposite number one, Suafa Longo, would he be someone you look at bringing in? Look, I, I'd like to, but. In my personal opinion, I don't have space for him. Um, I also is Pappy guaranteed to be out for the season, or is he a bit longer? Do we know yet? Is that I don't know, but it, it's it's a long enough time that it justifies bringing him far longer if you want him. Yeah. Mine, he scored two scores in. He scored a forty something. That was playing obviously not not a fullback, and then last week he got a thirty five or something like that. I don't love him right this minute. As a trading option, uh, he's probably my second trading option. Like if I was, if I, if Cooler wasn't there, I'd probably go in. Uh, but but I, like Cooler's only like 70, 80k more, and 
I'm just well, actually maybe a bit more than that, but um, yeah, I I just prefer cooler at that, that project. Well, cooler's four seventy and he's three forty, so cooler's yeah, like thirty k more. But yeah, I, I just prefer cooler as a as a trading option this week. But I can't knock you if you don't have as much money and you go a far longer. Uh, because even though he hasn't had big scores, he'll he'll, he'll pop off eventually and uh, score some tries in this in this storm outfit. Yeah. Uh, especially when they get all their boys back. Once Hughes is back as well, he'll, he'll have some big scores, I believe. Um, yeah. Obviously, Brown is the other six that's been talked about as a trading option for some of these sixes that haven't been playing well. Would you prefer you, you're, you're going Brown this week? That's correct. I'm going Brown, yeah. Look, I... I would like to bring in a monster, but I think Brown is better in the long term, just given he's not playing during that origin. So he is playing during that origin period. Um, after that, I would like to trade up to Munster. Again, he seems to have finally worked his way how to become the dominant half at Barramatta, but also scoring decently. So I think we're finally getting what Dylan Brown was promised. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with trading in Dylan Brown, but uh, I'm from up from on. Rather just wait a couple of weeks and see how he goes. Um, but yeah, no, there's, there's nothing wrong with trading in Dylan Brown yeah. this week. Whereas if I had not, I would be less inclined to trade in this week. Um, but yeah, if, you, if you're 100% set on Brown's being better than Burton, then, then you can definitely do that this week. Uh, yeah, there's, there's other players like a, a lane that you, you mentioned here. I, I already traded off him. Yeah, I, I'm not, I see no reason to keep him. Uh, what about yourself? Yeah, look, I don't think he's going to be playing that well, to be honest. I think his peak form, peak form is behind him. I think if you have him, you're kind of just lying to yourself that he's going to do well. I'd say trade him immediately. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, not super keen on him. Uh, some of them might become more relevant as a Ryan Madison in a couple of weeks, but um, I think that's still a, still a wait. A lot of these players uh, that, that could become options are, are definitely a wait and see uh, for mine. Uh, let's jump into betting in this game. What did you have uh, in this game? Look, I don't really know who's going to win this one. I genuinely think the Eels have a chance. So I'm going with Talangi, Sibo, and Coates. Bit of try scorer bingo at $14. Yeah, nice. Um, for myself, I jumped on the Eels plus nine and a half early, which is quite frustrating because, yeah, I got news that oh, there was someone reported that um, the Moses would be playing in this one. Uh, but Obviously, he isn't, so that's quite frustrating. But you can still, I would still, I still like the Eels in this spot, basically. Um, you can now get a plus 12 and a half on top sport at a dollar 90. So if I was going to play that right now, that's what I would be playing. Um, the Eels offer loss, uh, just, uh, I feel like they're due to, to come back and, and have a decent game. And a 12 and a half is a lot of points, especially without a Hughes uh, and a Pappenhaus in there to, to sort of facilitate some of that point scoring. Um, so, and Dejan Arzi back in the six as well. I like it. So long he looks good at fullback. So, yeah, uh, the 12 and a half, I feel like is money for jam. I, I definitely wouldn't play a nine and a half though now, which is what I played. But um, yeah, with knowing that Moses isn't there, I wouldn't go near a nine and a half. Uh, probably not super keen on an 11 and a half as well, but if you can still get a 12 and a half, uh, a jump on that one. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. If I was to say any team, if I was forced to say which team wins, I think it would probably be the Storm 1-12. to Yeah, yeah. That's another way you could play it as well, if you like that. Yeah, the Storm 1-12. <clears throat> um, let's jump into the final game of the round, the Tigers versus the Dolphins. Uh, yeah, there's a few players that are still super coach relevant. The big sort of in is the hammer for Trey Fuller. Yep, rather frustrating for us fullers, um, but the hammer is a lock to play Origin, surely. Yeah, you would think so. So, so fuller would get game time 13, 16, 19. So if you're fuller, well, you are a fuller owner, so what's your plan with him moving forward? Yeah, look, um, I probably am going to keep him there just in my team. I know you'll give me great coverage during that Origin period. Um, then after the Origin period is over, I will probably sell him and try to move up to a say, a Reese Walsh or maybe an Edwards, depending on which one of those players have been selected for origin. Yeah, yeah. For mine, it really depends on the, the makeup of your team. Uh, if I had a Fuller and Turbo, I'd trade Turbo out this week and then uh, hold Fuller and play him round 13 and then probably think about trading him out after round 13. 
Um, but yeah, I, I think more likely than not, you should be trading, or you should be keeping until at least after round 13 and then reevaluating from there. But um, I can understand some people wanting to trade him out uh, this week. Yeah. Um, yeah. In terms of, yeah, I don't, the other one, Lockie Galvin, a lot of people will still own. I think he still holds. I'm probably going to play him this week. Well, I am going to play him this week um, against the Dolphins team that concede a fair few points a week in, week out. You can still see him uh, sort of making stuff happen around him. So, yeah, definitely happy to hold and play Galvin still. Not a worry at all for my. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think he's scoring consistently enough in a position that doesn't necessarily have high scores. Um, so I think he's definitely a hold. Yeah, yeah. Someone who is a bit more of a worry is Api Corusau. Uh decent chance based origin as well. So someone who could be thinking about trading out. It's fallen below 500k as well. Um the only problem is is I don't really know who I would be trading him to. Uh yeah, I I'm, I'm honestly might not even play him this week with the depth in my squad, but um yeah, I, I don't really know where to look in, in the hooker position to trade him out. So I'm not really looking to trade him out at this point in time. Yeah, look, the thing I'm more worried about, he could play Origin, but also he's, he seems very still week to week with his back injury. So there's no guarantee he could be he could drop out like an hour before the game and you you'd be none the wiser. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um yeah, definitely not a player you should be going over here to trade in, but it's it's tough in that position to sort of like I'm not really interested in wasting a lot of trades in the hooker position, so I don't really want to trade him out uh, either. But it's it's yeah, it's very frustrating to watch. And Harry Grant didn't have a great score either, so both my hookers very frustrating to watch at this point in time. But um, yeah, what can you do? Maybe just don't play up either. Well, this week maybe he's more of a play, but I can understand people not playing him. Yeah, definitely. Anything to add to coach wise in this one? No, I think it's time to go straight to the gambling. Yep. Uh, so what what did you have in this game? Yep. So I think the Finns, they're full-ish strength now. They're just missing Flegler, who, uh, as a side note, I'm still carrying in my team, which I, I don't really know what to do with him. Um. So, yeah, that's another story for another day. But basically, I think the Finns come back, and they come back with a vengeance here. It's at their home state. Well, it's at their kind of home stadium. At Suncorp, so I'm going Finns 13 plus, Hammer, and Bostock to score anytime at 525. Yeah, nice. Uh, for myself, I don't have a bet in this one just to speak to why that is. If I was going to play it based off last week's result, I'd be looking at the Tigers because uh, the Dolphins obviously got that sort of surprise win. So public perception will be higher on the Dolphins. Um, I don't see Hammer as a massive, massive in with the way Pool is being played. Uh, obviously, he'll be good for them. He's a good, good player, but I don't see him as big of an in as maybe some other players might have been. But um, on the same in the same vein, there's obviously some decent outs for uh, for the Tigers. Caesar still out, IPAP and Bateman out as well now. So they're they're, they're a bit gutted. So I can't be very confident in the Tigers in this one. So happy to just leave this game alone. Fair enough. Um, perfect. Was there anything else to add? We currently have two side bets for the round uh, in the Panthers, both in the Panthers game, actually. Um, was there any super coach player that you would think will do really well or really poorly this round? Look, I think we've probably covered it all, to be honest. Um, yep. Cool. Yeah. Um, so just the two side bets for this round, magic round. Um, and then, yeah, as already mentioned, I lost the last uh sort of set of side bets so just leave us a comment i'll i'll do some form of punishment this week this weekend uh during magic round yeah don't worry and we'll uh we'll either upload it to our socials or it'll be during during, uh, during the next pod as we did so be yeah. prepared for that get keen get ready um the head's going to be doing something foul yep yeah, yep yeah. look forward to it yeah but um yeah no that's everything so as always we'll go fuck ourselves